In you, O oh God, is the fountain of life. In your light, we shall see light. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, the word of God is truth. And to grow in life is to be built up by the word of God. You know, there's it. It's of his own will. He begot he us by the word of truth. You see, we were born by the word of truth. And if you are born by the word of truth, it means your entire makeup, which is the inner man, is a product of the word. And your growing has to be by the word. But get this, you see, your growth of life, is not outside your source of life. Your growth of life has to be within the source of life, which is Christ. He said, by him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. The scripture says, in him was life. And said, his life is the light of men. So, your growth in life has to be the growth in Christ. You see, and how do we grow in Christ? We grow in Christ through the knowledge of him. Because it is by the knowledge of him we entered him. And it's by the knowledge of him we gain much understanding of him. You cannot understand him outside him. You understand him only by his knowledge. You see, and, and that is an important matter that we need to know. Growing in the knowledge of Christ is not a matter we can overemphasize. It's a matter we ha- you, one has to always come to that complete understanding or realization. You need to come to that place to know that you, you need to grow in the knowledge of Christ. Because your growth in life or how much you are built is by how, is, is by how much of his knowledge you have received. It's how you have grown deep into him. It is how much you are rooted in him. It is how much you are grounded in him that influences the, the reality that you carry and how you function in him. You see, You're, you must grow in Christ. You must, you must daily, you must daily come to that place where you see yourself growing, maturing in our Lord Jesus. And you see, growing in Christ is a from anything outside Christ. You don't grow in Christ and at the same time grow in other matters. Your growth in Christ is the growth in life. Not the growth in certain legalities which is outside Christ. The life of Christ is also in itself the law of Christ. Because the apostle Paul said in in Romans 8, he said in Romans 8 verse 1, he said There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. He said, for the law of the spirit of life. Oh, glory to God. He said, the law of the spirit of life has made them free from the law of sin and death. So you see, there are two laws. The law of sin and death and the law of the spirit of life. Which means life in itself is a law. Maybe some other time we'll take time to talk about the law of life. But now, I'm, I just want you to know that you must grow in a certain knowledge. And that knowledge is the knowledge of Christ. Your growth in the knowledge of Christ makes you grow in the knowledge of the law that governs the life of Christ. Because the law that governs the life in Christ is the life of Christ itself. The life of Christ is the law. Every life comes with its law. So, having the life of Christ means that you have a certain law. And that law is called the unforceful rhythms of grace. That law is grace. The grace of God is a law of God. It's a certain economy. It's an arrangement of God. So, when you're growing the knowledge of Christ, it means you are to grow in that knowledge of that which Christ has dispensed into you. Because the knowledge of Christ is Christ himself. And what Christ dispense to us is not something that is separated from him what christ dispense unto us is his him is his life and himself he gives us himself himself is what we experience and enjoy our growth must be in this christ it means our knowing of christ is growing in christ and it's also you being built up in christ and within these times you must aggressively tell yourself that you're going to grow in christ more and more because the scripture says that in the last days 
Many are going to give themselves to seductive words. Many are going to pay, take heed to lies. Some are going to be tossed to and fro. But you know what? They that are established in the truth of Christ are they that cannot stagger. The only way you will not stagger in faith is when you are growing in the knowledge of Christ. That's the only way you will not stagger in faith. You see, you don't stagger in faith except you are growing in the knowledge of Christ. But when you are not growing in that knowledge of Christ, you realize that you have no solid foundation. So you may be in Christ, but you are not continuing in Christ. You may be in Christ and continue in other matters which are outside Christ. And that's what Apostle Paul says, you are fallen from grace. You see, to fall from grace is to function outside Christ. It's to operate outside Christ. But you need, you need to come to that place. And this matter is so important to Apostle Paul. And so Apostle Paul had to address the people in Galatia, telling them the people he raised. Because you see in Galatians chapter 2, uh, you see Apostle Paul from verse 11, you see Apostle Paul dealing with the issue of living apart, apart from the law, not functioning within the law. And in Galatians 3, all right, in Galatians 3, you see Apostle Paul addressing them in showing his displeasure. So in Galatians 3 verse 1, he started, he started by saying that, quickly let's go to Galatians 3 1, he said, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the spirit? By the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. You see, so now take pay attention. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Now see how the see the opposites of the works of the law. The opposite of the works of the law is the hearing of faith. It means when you are hearing in faith, you don't function according to the works of the law. You don't live by the works of the law to enjoy the things you need to enjoy in Christ. You only experience the things you are supposed to experience in Christ by the hearing of faith. Now, if you are not hearing in faith, or you are not he your hearing is not of faith, it means that your works will not be of faith. Your works will be the works of the law. And the works of the law are not in agreement with the works of faith. The works of faith are as a result of the things you have heard in faith. Because faith produces a certain reaction in you. And faith in itself is God supplying all of his life, all of himself unto us. Most of the times, believers live, believers live thinking this, thinking that, you know, the Christian life or the church life is the testimony of behavior. But the truth is that the church life is not a testimony of behavior. The, test, the church life is a testimony of who you are. And who you are is as a result of what you have received into you. Which means that the church life is a testimony of Christ. And, and, and nothing else. We don't function by the concept of behavior modification. Or improving how one conducts himself in terms of conducting yourself to attain some things in God on the grounds of life and nature. No. No. Listen to me. When you come into Christ, your life begins by receiving. And the continuation of your life in him is a continuous receiving of all that has been dispensed into you. And, and this, this, this is it. When you become born again, you receive his life. And get this, he said in John 10 verse 10, he said, I am come that you will have life. You see? And have that life more abundantly. He didn't come to take your life. He came that you, you would have life. So, if you had come so that you would have life, it means that as you receive that life, 
you receive that life in its maximum load, abundantly, in all fullness. Remember, earlier I said that of his fullness we have received. So we have received the fullness of God in us. We have received the life of God in full package into us. So the day you receive the life of God, you receive that fullness of God. Which means that your life in Christ began by receiving Christ, who is the fullness of God. And then you continuing that life is you continuously growing in that knowledge of that life you have received. So, growing in that knowledge is causing your consciousness to receive abundantly what is already deposited inside you. That is the journey of a believer. The journey of a new creation is not a journey outside you. It's a journey into the depths of you. You journey into the the real man on the inside. Because the real man on the inside is the man that has received God. So to grow in Christ and to grow in the spirit, what we call spiritual growth. You see, spiritual growth is not necessarily your spirit growing because spirit don't grow. You see, the life of a spirit is a state. But what happens to you is that you grow instead in the consciousness of who you are on your inside. You become more aware. You come to a certain understanding. And that's what we say that the word of God is a mirror. The more you look into God's word for growth, you see, the more you get to see yourself. You only grow through the word of God. You grow through the word of his grace. He said, I commend you to God, Apostle Paul. He said, I commend you to God, speaking to the elders of Ephesus. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. So the word of his grace has the potency, has the ability to build you up and to give you an inheritance among the saints. It builds you up. The word of his grace, it builds you up. The epistles were letters written explaining the scriptures of God Onto the believers, onto the saints. And this explanation of scriptures brings the believers or the saints to the consciousness of who they are. Are you with me? It brings you to the consciousness of who you are. You see, that's why the word of God is called a mirror. It's a mirror. And that mirror is to reveal you. That mirror is is to bring you into a full realization of who you are. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. So if as he is, so are we in this world, how do you get to know who you are? You get to know who you are by knowing him. So Apostle Paul said, that I may know him. He said, that I may know him. So the more you come to know him, the more you come to see him, the more you come to behold who he is, the more you come to see who you have become. The teaching of God's word that bring us, brings us into growth and maturity actually is not to come and add something new to us. It's actually to reveal who we are in Christ Jesus. It's to reveal who we are in Christ. What it, 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 it only multiplies the knowledge of God within our spirit. It multiplies the reality of God within our spirit in our consciousness. Now, when you look into a mirror... What you see in a mirror is who you are. You don't look into a mirror to add anything new to yourself. When you look into a mirror, whatever image you see in the mirror is what you, is who you are. It doesn't add anything new. And that's what the word of God is. The word of God actually is to reveal who we are in Christ to us. So to grow in the knowledge of Christ, to grow through the knowledge of his word, the knowledge of grace, the gospel of grace. The gospel is to reveal who you are really in Christ and what Christ has made you to be in himself. So when we are talking about you growing in the knowledge of Christ, we are not saying you are growing the knowledge of something external. You are rather growing the knowledge of your intrinsic reality, the truth about you. That's the growth you have to experience. Hallelujah. So when he says that by the hearing of faith, they receive the spirit. By the hearing of faith, the hearing of faith, the hearing of faith, the hearing of the supply of God's grace unto us. The hearing of Christ Jesus because Christ is the very embodiment of our faith. He's the substance of our faith. So when you're hearing faith, it means you're hearing Christ. And the people
people in Galatia were hearing something different. And Apostle Paul thought, no, this is foolishness. They are being bewitched. So hearing anything outside Christ is you being bewitched. And you know, brethren, it's a warfare. It's a warfare to, you see, to grow in knowledge. It's a matter of warfare. It's a, it's a matter where you have to be so aggressive about. You must be aggressive that I have to grow in the knowledge of Christ and not in the knowledge of anything, not in the knowledge of any system, not in the knowledge of the, the news out there, but in the knowledge of the good news of our Lord Jesus. And the good news of our Lord Jesus is a complete news. It is not the news of the self. It's not a news of the senses. It's not a news of the mind. It is the news of God. And that news of God is a complete package of who you are. It's a complete package of what God has produced in you. It's a complete package of who Christ is. So hearing anything apart from Christ is you being bewitched. And Apostle Paul says it is foolishness. You see, it is foolishness. Now, to hear gives you the it is hearing what you hear is what gives you the opportunity to believe so when you hear that when you heard the gospel it gave you opportunity to believe in christ are you sure you're here with me it gave you the opportunity to believe in christ jesus so in first john look at it in first john Lakata brada bada baya. First John, the chapter number one. Ratoske Pradesh. I grow in knowledge. Landaro Sarunge Brate Keshamai. The word of God is prevailing our lives. <laughs> All right. Listen to, listen, listen to the apostle speaking to us in, in, in 1 John 1. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Do you see that? Which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. So what they heard. What, they, what their eyes saw, what their eyes looked upon, what their hands handled is the word of life. Not any other word. Not the word of self-effort. Not the word of any legalities. Not the word of any condemnation. The word of life. So to grow in the knowledge of Christ is to grow in, in, in the word of life. The more you receive that word of life, the more you grow in the knowledge of Christ. Because you're growing the knowledge of Christ is you're growing in the consciousness of your righteousness. Growing the knowledge of Christ is growing in the consciousness of your justification. Growing the knowledge of Christ is growing in the many things that Christ has already dispensed into you. It is you growing in who you are. Growing to come to know that you are more than a conqueror. Growing the knowledge of Christ is growing out of fear and growing more and more in the boldness that the Spirit of God has supplied unto you. Growing in the knowledge of Christ is growing more and more in your sonship. The adoption of sons. Growing the knowledge of Christ is growing more and more in the confidence of the love of God towards you. Growing in the knowledge of Christ is growing to come to understand the things that God has purposed for you. The intentions of God. The peace of God that surpasses every human understanding. To grow in the knowledge of Christ is to come to that full consciousness of the peace of God that has been dispensed unto you. He said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh boy. So you know what? When you come to the knowledge of Christ, you have come to the knowledge of your righteousness. How do I know that? Because he said for him who knew no sin has been made sin that we might become the very righteousness of God in Christ. How? Through Christ Jesus, the work of Christ. You see, in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 5, the verse number 7, he says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You see, when you come into Christ, he said, you are a new creation. He said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you are in Christ. You are growing in the knowledge of Christ. It also means that you are growing in the realities of the new life. You are coming to understand the newness of life. He said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He said, so with that God was in Christ. 
not counting our trespasses against us. You see, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, and He has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Said so to wit that God was in Christ, not counting our trespasses against us, and has given unto us the word of reconciliation. So what is the word of reconciliation? The word of reconciliation says that God is not counting your trespasses against you. He's not counting your trespasses against you. These are realities in Christ. This is not a reality outside Christ. Outside Christ, there is a picture that has been portrayed. And the picture which has been portrayed is that God is against you. But in Christ, the picture that has been portrayed is that God loves you. And his love towards you is endless and changeless. You cannot walk in this consciousness until you are growing more and more in the knowledge of Christ. Until you are feasting on the truth of God. You see? When you are feasting on that truth of God, then you are growing in the very knowledge of God. Then you are growing in full understanding of all that God has dispensed unto you. Hallelujah. So it's the word of life which we have received. Which we have received. And he said, this word is what they declare unto you. You see that in the verse 3. This word that they received was what they were declaring. So their communication is the very word of God. Is the wisdom of God. And that wisdom of God is Christ. And it's in him. It is not outside him. It is not outside Christ. Until Christ came, we never saw the full wisdom. So for Christ has been made unto us wisdom. So to grow in the knowledge of Christ, also to grow in, in the wisdom of God. To grow in the wisdom of God. You see? There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. So when you are in Christ Jesus and you are growing in the knowledge of Christ, it means you are growing the knowledge of no condemnation. You live your life without sense of guilt, without sense of condemnation. You live your life full of a living hope. Without any sense of fear of what shall be. The news of the world will not move you. The knowledge of Christ makes you know that you are a person who has been begotten in light. It, you come to a place to realize that you are a light being. You see, this is the matured man. A matured man is one who has grown in Christ. Who has matured in Christ. God doesn't just want you to be born again. You know, you are born again and you have come into Christ and you say you are saved. And you are born again and that is it. No. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, he said, God wishes that all men shall be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. He wished that all men, not some men, all men shall be saved. And that they will come to the knowledge of the truth. That's God's desire. God's desire is that all men shall be saved. And they will come to the knowledge of the truth. So you see, he said, I, will, I stand at the door. And he said, I knock. And anyone that opens that for me to come in, I will dine with him. What is dining? To dine is to feast. To feast is to eat. When you come into Christ Jesus, you are dining with him. So the day Christ entered you, he entered you so that he would dine with you. He will continuously feast with you. And to feast is to eat to grow. The purpose of eating is for growth. And what do we feast? We feast on God. In John chapter 6, when Jesus Christ was once to be, to, be, to be appointed as king. The people wanted to make Jesus a king. The Bible says that, and Jesus escaped. And the following day, you know what Jesus did? He announced to them who he is. He said, I'm the bread of life. Jesus didn't just want to be a king unto them. He said, I want to be a bread to you that you eat. So Christ came into us to become our eternal diet for our feasting. And when you feast on him, then you grow. Your growth is by him. And that growth makes him become, you see, your life. And consciousness and you should become his very expression. Growing in the knowledge of Christ is so important. It's a matter you cannot do without. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. 